So Romans 8, 28 says, we know that God works all things together for good to those who love him. And this verse tells us what we will one day see in retrospect. And, and Lewis has some great stuff on this. In the problem of pain, he says, both good and evil, when they are full grown, become retrospective. Heaven, once attained, will work backwards and turn even that agony into a glory. The curse is going to be reversed. Faith is believing that one day we are going to see that Romans 8.28 was true all along, even in those moments when we most doubted it. Uh, Joseph saw that in, in Genesis 50:20. You intended it for evil, but God intended it for good. Not just God made the best of bad circumstances. No, God intended it for good. He intends for good the suffering that we go through in this life. Retrospect. Now, retrospect is how we can call the worst day in human history Good Friday. Do you ever think about that? I mean, what name would you come up with? How about Horrific Friday? How about Bad, like in all caps, Friday? The worst day there's ever been. Could, well, what day in human history has been worse than the innocent Son of God being crucified and taking upon himself the, the sinless one, the sins of the world. I mean, is, does it get worse than that? But in retrospect, knowing the resurrection, knowing the plan of God, we look back and we say, Bad Friday ultimately deserves to be called Good Friday. It's not a bad name. It's a good name. Good Friday. Of course, if there hadn't been a resurrection, if he hadn't accomplished redemption, all of that, that'd be a different story, but that's not the story. God has accomplished his purpose. And one day, we'll look back in advance. So meanwhile, I, I mean, look back in retrospect, and we'll realize God really did work it all together. So God calls upon us to believe that right now. It's almost like a forward memory, like you're believing in advance as if you would believe something that had already happened. That's faith. That's trusting God. Trust God that he is at work in your life, even in your sufferings, and that he's going to bring eternal good out of those sufferings. Not just that there'll be the time of suffering followed by the time of glory, but the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. These light and momentary afflictions are what? They're accomplishing something. They're working toward that eternal weight of glory. Jesus didn't just say, you live in sorrow and it'll be followed by joy. He says what? Your sorrow will turn into joy. It's like the childbirth analogy. Ultimately, there is only one answer to the question of evil and suffering that's big enough to stand up. And that is Jesus and Jesus' eternal redemptive plan where his people will indeed live happily ever after. And it won't be a fairy tale. It'll be the real thing. And if you ever say to yourself, you know, I'd never do to my child what God has done to me. And, you know, he must not care. You know, picture Jesus stretching out his hand. And, and, and saying to you one day, look at me. Do these look like the hands of a God who does not care? Consider what I did for you. Well, here's, here's the thing, though. Let's none of us wait until we die to come to believe Romans 8, 28. And to come to believe what truly, fully, that what Jesus is doing in our lives, he's doing out of love for us. And he'll make it all better one day and wipe away the tears and we will see his incredible plans and what he was accomplishing that we just did not understand.